In Israel today, there are still thousands of elderly people that remember the Holocaust. For a lot of them, living through this war is very painful and brings back traumatic memories. But some of these Holocaust survivors were caught right in the middle of the attacks of October 7th, and they have new stories to tell. You know, life is a funny thing. When you're 80 something years old, you were born in the middle of World War II. You grew up in Poland and all of your childhood, you saw signs of destruction that the war had left behind. All kinds of hardships that would weigh heavily on you, basically your entire adult life. You move away from Poland, you come to Israel, you settle in a small kibbutz on the Gaza border, and you live your life. You raise a family, your children grow up, and you're now a grandmother, and you watch your grandchildren become young adults and one day your beloved grandson goes to this big party that they organize out in the fields next to the kibbutz it's totally a normal thing you would think so that party becomes the site of a massacre and 300 people lose their lives not only did you lose your grandson but you also know nine other people that lost their lives in the attacks and it's not even the end of that story you can't even grieve at home you have to evacuate the area and you're away from your home for months not only your home but also your social life there's a very special place in the community it's a center for the elderly where people come together they socialize they get a hot meal there's workshops there's things to do there's painting arts and crafts music and even therapies and you know in your grieving heart that going back to this place will help you a lot because there's somebody to talk to somebody to cry with and just take your mind off of things but the center has been closed for months because this whole area the whole region is evacuated but kibbutz leadership is starting to come back and starting to plan and starting to organize to to bring people back so finally you hear that the center is going to open back up because if they want the they want people to come back to the area they need to show that it's safe and they need to offer social activities for those that come back and live so it's the elderly that are the first ones to come back because families are still waiting there's still no schools they can't bring their children there because there's no activities for the children but the senior citizens can finally go back they can socialize they can spend time together and revive their community and it's therapeutic in so many ways a lot of these people they remember the holocaust they remember their childhood in some destroyed european city they remember five wars that they lived through in israel and they remember all the people they lost in their kibbutz and their community in the same center and their own family as well it's a really sad story, especially because this is a Holocaust survivor and what she went through as a child, you wouldn't want that to be repeated. But in my interview with this lady, she had many beautiful things to say. And one thing that really stuck out was choosing life. Her whole life has been accompanied by tragedy. And the way that she makes it out every time with a smile on her face is by choosing life. And I think that is a takeaway for all of us. Choose life in every situation. Choose to be happy. Choose to put a smile on your face, even when it's tough, even when there's loss and tragedy. You can make it out and things can get better. Just look at the example of this lady. There's actually 200 seniors in that center and all of them have amazing stories to tell. They're the first ones to go back to their kibbutz and be an inspiration to their community. And I hope that you can also be inspired by this story. And if you come back tomorrow, I'll tell you another one.